Okay, YouTube, what's going on, everyone? I hope that everyone out there is doing as best as they possibly can in this life. I will use the word hope in that context. Um, you know me, I'm a cope guy, not a hope guy, but I do hope that y'all are doing as well as you possibly can out there. But I want to I want to talk about a couple things here. I was doing a video in my car two days ago when I was with my brother and I was talking about mental health and I was getting into it, but he came out, so I stopped the video. <clears throat> but here's the thing with when we use the word happy, what does the word happiness mean? This is what happiness means. It's something that Arthur Arcturus said in one of his videos. He said that happiness is a state of the body. And that is absolutely true. And it also is a state of the way that you are handling your mental health with your physical state. And I know all too well about health issues and mental issues. I know all too well about these things. I have been finding myself in another one of my ruts the last three, four, five days. I don't know. It's been at least four days now. It's four or five days it's been. So there's something that my mind automatically does, but I know when I was younger, you see, my body, I wasn't having uh, physical problems. You see what I'm saying? So I could get past it better because my physical state was better. And I think for a lot of people, we don't recognize or we don't realize how important mental health is here. And I know for me, if I would have not been in such denial my whole life, I would have gotten more help with my mental things that go on. Because the reason people can't get help with mental issues or people can't get what they need to cope with those mental issues is because of denial. And I know that's what it was for me, you know, in denial saying, no, I got this. I can handle this. Everything's going to be okay. It's just a little phase that I'm going through and I'll get through it. And every single time I'm thinking that, oh, maybe it won't happen again. Maybe it won't come again. You know, maybe this time I have it beat. I know better than that. I know better than that for myself. I know that when I am feeling too good up here, or I might be in a mania, or I might be having days and weeks where there's really not too much going on in this neighborhood, I know all too well that is when the Mike Tyson uppercut is coming. I know all too well for myself. Now today, I don't feel as bad, but like I said, I am having some physical problems with my mental problems, and this is what is making it so bad. If I wasn't having these physical problems, I could get through the mental stuff a lot easier because the word, I don't really like using the word happiness because I, I don't really click with that word. I think that's kind of a, it's kind of like a kiddie word, you know, that kids use when they're younger. But I think that it's a state of the body. It is how you feel physically. Do you feel good physically right now? 
If you don't, if you're not getting headaches, if you're not sick, if your head doesn't hurt, if you don't have breathing problems, if you are right physically and you still say that you're not right, then it's something mental. It's something psychological going on that is causing your problems. Because I know for me, it's what's causing my problems. It is mental things that cause some of the physical things, but it's mainly physical things causing the mental things. It, it, it's kind of a little of both. It's almost evened out, but I have to say that the physical things that I'm having go on, even as I'm speaking in this video, I'm light, I'm lightheaded. I, I just don't feel right. I just don't feel right. And I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. Um, and it's very frustrating. It's, it's not fun when you have physical problems and you don't know what's going on with you. It's not fun. It's, it's kind of like uh, a daymare, you know, it's, it, it's, you know, when you're not healthy, when you're, when your physical stuff goes out the window, this is why I spread the awareness that I spread to people because I'm telling those of you who smoke cigarettes, I know you like cigarettes, I know you're addicted to cigarettes and more than likely you're not going to listen to anything I say. You're going to blow it off and say, oh, well, it's not bothering me now. You know, it's not affecting me now. So, you know, I'm going to keep smoking because I want to smoke. And if people want to smoke, they have every right to do that. But I, I was saying something to my dad a couple months ago. I said, dad, you are smoking like over a pack a day, like chain smoking. I said, this is going to eventually catch up. You know, it, it, hey, if you want to smoke, you want to smoke. But here he had a couple strokes and all that stuff happened. And this is why me, I don't, I don't allow myself to do anything that is really bad for me. I have one vice, one vice right now, and that is the medication that I take. I take one medication. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't have sex, I don't do anything. I don't go to the bars, I don't do none of that stuff. But I know these things, it's just like the song with Ludacris. All this drinking gon' catch up, and all this smoking gon' catch up. But some just really don't give a what. You know, they, they don't care until it's too late or... You know, we talk all this shit now when we're healthy, but later on in life, it's going to be hell. It's going to be hell for us if we don't live healthy now, is what I'm saying. And that's why I spread this awareness to people. I'm saying, stop now while you can. Deal with things now while you can. I would say get used to pain and suffering and having things happen, people dying, things going wrong. Get used to these things because sooner or later, they are going to happen to every one of us. And it's just how life is, y'all. You know, it's just how it is. It's just me being honest with everyone. But yeah, I just wanted to hit on how important most people that they're in denial of their mental health. They're in denial of what is making them a lot of the ways that it is making them because I know how in denial I was with a lot of this stuff and I'm not in denial anymore. And it isn't that that solved all my problems because I got out of denial. You know, some of my problems got worse, but some of my problems got better. You see, it's the, it's the double-edged sword yet again. It's the, it's the contradiction that I can't get away from. But I know if I could find out what's going on with my health things, I would be a lot better mentally, you see? But when I have these mental things come up, 
it makes my physical things a lot worse. And then when my physical things come up, I have these fl flare ups or whatever goes on with my body or whatever's going on with my nerves or my my nervous system or my immune system, which I don't know what's going on. I can't pinpoint it. It causes me to get into mental ruts when I have that happening. So that's why I do everything in my power that I can to prevent that as much as I can because I already know what it's hitting for before it comes. I already been going through this for, you know, 20 odd years. So I know what to expect. And I know that there might be younger people listening to this. There might be people that smoke and drink and do all these things they're doing. And hey, if that's what you do, that's what you do. It's not my life. Um, I don't care what other people do, but it, it's just me telling you, if you don't want to deal with a lot of this stuff later on in life, you better stop now. You better find alternatives. You better look into uh, dealing with, maintaining, coping with your mental state. Because I'm telling you, it can get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot worse. A lot worse. And please... If you're somebody watching this video, do not let a doctor prescribe you Xanax, Klonopin, Valium. Do not let a doctor prescribe you benzodiazepines. Do not get on those. I'm telling you right now, if you want to know what hell itself on earth is, you think it's hell now having sweaty palms and, you know, feeling anxious and swallowing and feeling nervous around people, you have no idea, no idea what these things will do to your brain. I have been off of these things for seven years, seven years, and I still get panic attacks. I still get these attacks that I never got before in my life. But over the years, see, over the years, for the first couple years, three, four, five years, I was getting these attacks that I call horror attacks. You can't breathe. You can't think straight. You can't swallow right. It's like your body is, you're not in control of your bodily functions almost. You're, you're just, you're completely out of it. You're, it's literal hell. That's the only way I can describe it. So I'm telling people, this is just a warning. Do not get on these things. Even if you're on them now, if I was you, I mean, if you're on them and you take them, do whatever you do. But I know for me, I got off of them and it was one of the worst experiences that I ever went through in my entire life. It was it was so bad, I can't even describe to you how bad it was for me. And I still have problems to this day. You know, I still got physical problems. I still got mental things going on with me that ain't right. You know, it never, it never healed. It never went away. You know, I was clean. I was completely clean in 2016 to 2017, early 2017, I was clean for about eight, nine months until about July, August 2017. And I just couldn't deal with the withdrawal from those and I couldn't deal with how I felt physically and I couldn't maintain my mental health. I couldn't do it anymore. I just, I had another breakdown and I had many breakdowns in my life. It ain't just one. I had many, many, many breakdowns. I had have, I have had many rock bottoms in my life. This is nothing new to me. I, I already know about these things. That's why, I mean, if it gets worse than this, I, I mean, I don't see how it can get so much worse. It can get worse. 
but I know what that is to say, damn, this is very, very bad. I have been there many times and I know what not to ever do again. I, it, benzos terrify me. You see how my hand just shook like that? I still have problems where my, you know, my joints and shit, my, my nerves are messed up. It's just, it's a lot of things. You can't see it in the video because when you're seeing me in the video, you know, you, you don't, when you look at other people, looks are deceiving. When you look at someone that's pretty, you go, oh, they don't have no problems. That pretty girl don't have no problems. How do you know? She might have Parkinson's. She might have a, a, a nervous system problem. She could have uh, migraines. She could have a whole bunch of stuff going on with her. Or you see a handsome guy and you go, oh, he doesn't have any problems. He eats healthy. He works out. But how do you know? We, we don't know. Did you ever see someone that got cancer and they look okay and then the next day they're dead? I have seen this before. I have seen people that have had cancer and the next day or two, you hear that they're dead and they looked fine. They looked fine. And then here you're hearing that they're dead and they're gone. So, you know, it, all that I'm saying is while we are alive here, if we're having mental problems, we have got to go and get the help that we need for those mental problems. Don't let your denial, don't let this thing that you got it trick you into thinking you got it. Now, I can't tell you where to go with it. I can't tell you what to do with it. I, I really can't. I don't have an answer in that arena because even me, the way that I cope is with these videos. I go somewhere every month, but sometimes it's not enough, but I don't always have this come up. This is once in a blue moon, but but I'm not in denial of these things. I do have mental health issues. I do, and I'm not in denial of that. And I have physical issues, and I'm not in denial of that either. And coping with them, I have to eat as healthy as I possibly can. I have to speak as healthy as I possibly can. I have to live as healthy as I possibly can. I have to accept the fact that I have things going on up here that I really don't have any control of. And I have things going on with this vessel that I have some control over, but then the things that are going on with my head and my breathing and my nerves and my hands getting swollen red and my feet swelling a little and just having eye issues. I can't help that. That's like, I think that's something permanent that will never go away. Ever since I had my head uh, injury, my, I say brain injury because it was a brain injury. I had a brain injury. And ever since then, it has just not been right. I have never been 100%, never. Never. There's some days where I can say that I'm being truthfully honest. There's some days where I'm like 75%. There's some days where I'm like 85%, 80%. Some days I'm like 50, 55, 60%. I'm, I'm not right at all. Um, and I'm a 37-year-old man. I shouldn't be going through a lot of this what I'm going through. So when people are on here and you're having physical problems and mental problems, you're not telling me anything that I don't know. I'm suffering with you. I know exactly what you're talking about and more because I went through it. I had hepatitis C and I took the medication to get rid of the hepatitis C. Now, was there side effects with that medication that might be causing some problems for me? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it caused some other problems with me. I have no idea. Um, because when I was taking that medication, I had these weird side effects. I, I had things going on with my with my with my mind and with my body, like a, a couple things. I'm not gonna gonna get into everything, but 
it, it had a, a little bit of side effects. And I don't know if that did some damage because I had to take it for like eight weeks. So I don't know if that did something. And I had hep C for a very long time. I had hep C for like 17 years. You know, so my body, I had that for so long. And then on top of a brain injury and taking these benzos and suboxone and drinking and doing heroin, I mean, it's just a bad combination. And I didn't treat my temple right. I didn't treat my bodily temple right. And now I'm paying for those things. And I'm the one to blame. That's the bad part. I'm the one to blame. And see, that's why I have to say I'm the one to blame. Because if I'm in denial, it's just going to make it worse. I'm just going to keep holding on to this thing. And I'm going to keep acting like it's something that it's not. No, I'm confronting it. I'm confronting the thing. I haven't been doing well the last couple of days. That's the truth. I'm having some physical things go on. That's the truth. Maybe this can help with these problems. You see, as I'm doing this video, I'm literally feeling better, a little bit better as I'm doing this video because I'm being honest with you. I'm being honest with myself. I'm being honest with myself. You see, the person that's watching... You know, whatever you do, if you self-reflect, if you listen, if you don't listen, if you just want to watch, it doesn't matter. But I know for me, I'm being honest and I'm putting this out there for someone else that might be going through the same thing I'm going through. And it doesn't have to be you speaking about it. It can be you listening and reflecting it back into your mind and it might help you through the day. I don't know, but I can't promise anything. All that I know is that it helps me a little bit. And wherever I can get a little bit of help, I'm going to get that help. I don't care where it's from. I don't care who it's from. I mean, I think before I get into stuff. I'm not just saying listen to anybody or go anywhere or do anything I'm just saying, if I can get help in an honest way, if I can get help in a uh, in a healthy manner, then that's what I'm going to do for myself. Because if I don't, then all I'm doing is I'm causing more chaos. I'm bringing more problems to myself. And why would I do that? That's an oxymoron. That's stupid. And this is what a lot of people with mental health problems and physical problems they're not getting real with themselves. They're not getting out of the denial of what is going on with them. And as long as we are in denial, as long as we are keeping it to ourselves, and we're not doing anything about it, it's going to make it worse. It's going to amplify the problems. I know. I, I'm, I'm a living example. I waited four days to do a video. I've been holding on to it. I've been holding on to it, holding on to it, thinking, oh, it'll go away. It'll get better on its own. It's just a thing. Yeah, it's just a thing. But if, you, if I don't talk about it, if I don't let it out of here, if, if I don't speak it out of me, if I don't get that energy away from me, then it seems to consume and eat away and keeps nagging at me. And then it just builds up the, the stress. And when you have stress, there's all kinds of things that can cause cancer. There, there's a million things. Stress can cause cancer. Not eating right can cause cancer. Not sleeping enough can cause cancer. I mean, I don't mean to get so uh, into the details here but we just don't realize how bad stress is. It kills people. It's killing people. Stress. Stress alone is one of the worst things for your physical and your mental state. I know. I know. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a video to, to let you know 
that if you are in denial, you are not going to help your situation at all. And this is one of the toughest things for a prideful man, an egotistical woman, a woman that thinks she has to be strong and independent all the time, uh, a man that thinks he got it and his pride is telling him, oh no, this, nah, I can beat this. I'm going to do everything to motivate myself. See, this is the danger of these things that I talk about. I'm not saying that there isn't a positive to it, and I'm not saying that there isn't a negative to it. It's a double-edged sword. It's a contradiction. It's just like anything else in life. And the sooner that we get to the root of what is going on, which is a conundrum, it's a contradiction, because we're having something go on, but we let the pride and the ego and I'm right and I got this get in the way of helping ourselves. And a lot of us, we're creating our own problems. We're creating our own suffering. We're creating a lot of the problems. I'm not saying every problem. I'm not saying that it's every problem because there's problems with me that I'm not even creating. They just come about out of thin air. The mental things that go on with me, it just comes. I did a video, it came. That's the only way I can describe it as it came. And it came out of nowhere, like the Mike Tyson uppercut when people used to fight Mike Tyson. They had no idea that uppercut was coming and they were cocky and arrogant and they thought that they could beat him. And when they got that uppercut, they did not get up. You see, they were in denial of what Mike Tyson could do. They're in denial of what their mental health is doing. They're in denial of what their physical things are doing to them. I'm not saying for everything. I'm just saying for some things. You know, every time I say something, I mean some things or I mean most things. I'm not always saying that it's that way in totality with what I'm saying. So yet again, it all comes down. It all comes down to coping honestly. Hope is not going to do nothing for you. You can hope every day that something's going to happen, that you're going to get better. You can hope for weeks and months and years. I did it. I hoped for days, weeks, years at a time. Years at a time, I hoped that all this stuff would solve itself, that my physical problems would just go away, my mental things would just clear up. It doesn't happen like that. Hope does not do anything for the person. When you're coping honestly, that means that you're making the move that you might have to make so that you're not remaining in that place in your life. And that is all we can do here, my friends. That is all that we can do, brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, whoever you are out there. It's all we can do is cope honestly. If we're hoping for things, that hope is a delusion in my opinion. I use hope in the text of I hope everyone's doing well. I hope you're having an all right day for yourself, but I don't use hope as in making things happen or waiting for something to happen and hoping for it. You know, there's a lot of people that use this word and they use it in that text. They use hope as denial to not do anything. And it angers me because I see what they're doing to themselves. They're hoping that their situation is just somehow going to get better on its own. It's not. You got to do something about it. If you're, if you're having some kind of problem, you have to do something about the problem that, that, that was created. Whether you created it or not, or you wanted it to happen or not, this is just life, y'all. It's just how it is. 
And as long as we're in denial and we're hoping, 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 I'm, I'm just hoping that someone's going to come and, and help me with this thing. I'm just hoping that this problem's going to go away. I'm just hoping that this issue's going to resolve itself. I'm just hoping that my mental health will get better. I'm just hoping that my physical state will somehow, I will have my miracle day. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And see, a lot of people, they don't want to hear that. And the reason they don't want to hear that is because they have to make a move. They have to do something to help prevent it or stop it. And most people just don't want to do that. And, and I know for me, I have been being lazy with these things too. I have been in denial of these things myself. And some of the things I have helped and some of the things I can't help, it just automatically comes out of nowhere. And I have to cope with it. You see, I'm not hoping that it's going to resolve itself. I have to cope with it. I have to be honest and get out of my denial first and say, look, you, you can't be in denial of these things. If you're in denial, nothing is going to happen. It's going to remain to be the same exact way. And it sucks. It sucks doing. It sucks having to say you were wrong or to let your pride down or to say, yeah, you know what? This whole time I was thinking in a way that I shouldn't have thought. You know, for people to swallow their pride, for people to take it on the head. And this is why humanity <clears throat> has a lot of the problems humanity has is because a lot of humanity is in denial and we have this hope complex. The hope complex has got to go. We have got to bring in cope, coping mechanisms, coping skills, cope and craft. That's the only way that I see it is cope and craft. Finding a craft and coping. Finding something to cope with and maybe looking into some kind of craft to keep you distracted, to help keep you healthy, whatever you have to do. You see, that would be my final words. If they said, do you have any final words for the people of the world? I would say, cope and craft. Those would be my final words. And that's what I'm going to end the video with. Take care. Quit being in denial. Do what you got to do while you're here. It's life. Let your pride down. Let your hope complex down. Sometimes you got to do things you don't want to do. Cheers.